Salmon season means a chance for anglers to tangle with some of Idaho's most exciting game fish. The number of salmon returning to Idaho changes each year, which affects the timing and the length of the seasons. Idaho Fish and Game needs to carefully manage the fishery to make sure anglers catch their share, but not to over-harvest the run. Salmon seasons and fishing conditions can change quickly. Biologists need careful counts of both the numbers of salmon returning and the number of salmon harvested at the same time. In part two of our series, we will answer some important questions about how salmon seasons are managed once the fish arrive. To estimate number of fish harvested or the number of fish that we incidentally kill through catch and release fishing while we're trying to harvest fish, to estimate that number, we use basically two pieces of information. The amount of effort of fishing there is going on out there on the river and the catch rates. How many hours would you say you fish total? Probably four. Probably four? And then between counts or with a different crew, they'll go through and they'll interview anglers. And that's where anglers really meet the creel clerks and that's where they have that interaction. You got one earlier this morning? The clerks will ask them, you know, how long have you been fishing? So we get hours of effort for that angler. And then what have you caught? Catch anything? And if the angler's caught a fish, and it's fished 10 hours, then that's 10 hours per, per fish for that angler's catch rate. Catch rates can fluctuate and start out being zero, basically. Maybe no fish are here when we open the fishery. And then it'll turn into maybe 70 hours per fish. A few people are catching fish, and then it can just turn on us almost overnight to some really good catch rates where people are picking up a fish every 10 hours or so. I think we're just going to head out. We have another count at two. Because that can change so quickly, if we were to say just creel two or three days a week, we could miss that and our, our estimates could be way off. My crews will go out and drive down the river, not stop and talk to anybody, and just count anglers. And they'll do that six times a day and we'll take an average. So this is the way we can get the most accurate and least biased estimate of the harvest. We're provided a certain harvestable number of fish and we really can't go over that. Because if we go over that, then we would limit um, the brood stock we needed to produce the next generation of fish. So it's very important that we not go over that, that harvest goal. Some people, uh, you know, might say, geez, you never come talk to me. You don't know how many fish I caught. How do you know how many fish were harvested yesterday? There's no way we could interview everyone. We try to sample in a manner that we're not over, either overestimating or underestimating. We don't hit just the best holes or don't talk to just the best and successful anglers. We try to sample the entire fishery uniformly and then from that we can get a statistical estimate, valid estimate with confidence intervals around that estimate at, that we're comfortable with. It's pretty typical for our sport fishery on the South Fork to close when the fishing is at its absolute best. Catch rates are high, people have come out to fish because catch rates are high, so harvest is high. When the catch rates start getting good, people start participating more, and those catch rates multiplied by those increased hours of effort can cause us to harvest hundreds of fish a day. So once we see those catch rates and that harvest go up, that participation go up, then we need to project out, are we gonna meet that goal in a couple of days? That's about the most time we can give people, is about 48 hours of fishing after we decide we think we're gonna meet it in two days. That's why we, you know, we typically close when the fishing is at its absolute best. Because if we let that fishing go on through its absolute best, we would way over harvest our share. 
All this angler survey information that we go out and collect, it's only as good as the information we get from the public. Now some folks think, oh, if I don't report those wild catch and release fish, you're gonna keep the fishery open longer. Well, it really doesn't work that way because we're working towards two numbers, the harvest goal and this, what we call a, a, an incidental take limit on these natural fish. The permits are pretty much set up to, to meet those two numbers at the same time because we really know what proportion of fish are in the river. The way to keep these fisheries open is to report this information accurately so that we continue to receive permits to fish on these runs. How many fish will return every year is, is controlled and influenced by a variety of factors. We have now enough fish marked, mainly with these pit tags, so we know individuals. We can, we can detect them remotely with antennas through all the dams. As those fish start coming back through the dam system, we get a better and better idea as to how many fish are coming back to which system. And as soon as those fish get past Lower Granite Dam, the last dam, we have a really good idea of how many fish are going to return to each system and whether there is a harvestable surplus or not. That's why early in the season we might not know. I have a really good target as to how many we can harvest. We just know we can harvest some. We have a, a conservative idea and usually that number increases as the fish return up through the hydro system. I couldn't just say at the beginning of the season that we're gonna open on June 20th, we have 3,000 fish to harvest, we know we're gonna be open for a month. I can't say that. That's, that's what all that daily um, survey information is for, because we can't say that. So the length of the season can be influenced not just by the numbers of fish returning, but also by what kind of uh, catch rates and participation we have when the fish return. <music>